On this episode, we take the 2020 Subaru Ascent into the Cascade Mountains to see how well symmetrical all-wheel drive can handle slippery situations with snow tires and X mode. It's coming up on Driving Sports TV. You might remember last week we drove the 2020 Subaru Outback in the snow and yeah, it did pretty good actually. Now a lot of viewers said, hey, you know, you're not giving it a real fair shake here because you're driving on all season radials in the snow, which doesn't make a lot of sense. We hear you. So this week, yeah, we got a Subaru Ascent and it's got snow tires. Of course, this week we have less snow, but we'll make do. Before we get into the slippery stuff, let's take a closer look at the Subaru Ascent we're driving today. If you wanna watch a full review of the Ascent where we take a look at all the safety gear and features, check out our full review with the 2019 model because for 2020, it's essentially unchanged. All Ascent trims come standard with a 2.4 liter direct injected four cylinder boxer motor that's been turbocharged for 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. It's connected to a continuously variable transmission, and like all Subaru family cars, it features Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive system. The key difference with the Ascent over the Outback XT models is that the Ascent features three rows of seating. That means you can have up to eight passengers or fold all the rows down for 86 cubic feet of total storage. The second row features some nice options for passengers, including heated seats and USB power. Our Ascent Limited came with the optional $2,950 package that includes panorama sunroof, upgraded eight inch infotainment with navigation. Find the nearest Starbucks. Starbucks, choose an item from the list shown. Starbucks, do you want to start navigation? And the Harman Kardon surround sound system. Prices you see it here, 43,305 US dollars, including destination and delivery. Our test vehicle also came with Continental snow tires, which are not included in that price. The EyeSight safety system is still standard across all trims. This provides collision mitigation as well as adaptive cruise control with lane assist. Our Limited also has blind spot warnings and rear auto braking, which is a pretty cool feature. All Ascent trims come standard with Apple CarPlay. Find the nearest Starbucks. The nearest one I found is Starbucks on 120th Avenue Northeast in Kirkland. Heading out, the Ascent drives like any other Subaru. Handling is quite good, thanks to the Boxer Motor's naturally low center of gravity and the standard all-wheel drive system. Plus, the Ascent features brake torque vectoring to help rotate the vehicle around corners. It does this by adding a small dab of brake to the inside wheels based on sensor inputs. This helps rotate the vehicle around a central yaw point. With Subaru's X mode, this same brake vectoring technology is applied to enhance the Ascent's off-road and snow driving capabilities. By leveraging braking technology and software, Subaru is essentially able to replace both a limited slip differential and off-road lockers. To test just how well this system does work in challenging situations, we took the 2020 Ascent equipped with snow tires deep into the Cascade Mountains. We're riding on Continental Viking Contact 7s. Seem to provide a pretty decent grip. Though the snow isn't too deep here, the surface is loose, exposing soft dirt which brings up another less known benefit of snow tires. They actually make an excellent substitute for rally tires too. Oh yeah, this is actually just fun. We're looking at about six inches of snow. Uh, it's a little bit icy because it's 37 degrees here right now. And we are yeah, sliding a little because yeah, it's slippery. But enough goofing around, let's head to the first real challenge. So with the Outback, getting out of the reservoir was actually one of the more challenging bits. There's less snow today, but there's still plenty of ice to give a little bit of a challenge. So we're gonna go ahead and put this into X mode on. 
I'm also going to put traction control back on and away we go. As wheels are losing grip because of dips in the trail, you can see X mode really doing its job. Yeah, even snow tires are pretty worthless when there's little to no surface contact because of surface irregularities. As a wheel loses grip, individual wheel brakes apply to transmit power back into the system, giving torque to the other wheels that presumably have grip. This first challenge should have given you a glimpse as to how X-Mode functions. Once on the snow-covered mainline, X-Mode automatically disables as I hit speeds over 19 miles per hour. I prefer to drive down these roads with traction control off because I'd like to spin my wheels a little bit. Um, however, if this is a little bit too drifty for you, then you can certainly just uh, re-enable it with a pu push button down here. And that is one thing that I do like about the Ascent versus the new tablet display in the Outback is that I can turn on and off traction control with a simple flip of the switch down below. I don't have to dig through menus. In fact, I don't even have to look at the button. I know it's right there. And yeah, it puts a little power to the back when you want to throttle in through the corners. It really helps you rotate uh, e even in the slippery stuff and especially with snow tires because they give you a little bit more grab. Now, snow tires are not just a different cut compared to all season radials. They're actually a different compound that stays softer in colder temperatures. And that's important because you need the grip in addition to uh, having the different blocks to be able to repel the snow out of them. And if there is enough grip available, my traction control off philosophy can also be applied to climbing slippery hills. Oh, that was with traction control off. Let's try it again with traction control on. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go in reverse with hill descent control on. And you can see that it works both forwards and backwards. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, now that we know we can get up it with traction control off just by spinning our wheels like mad, uh, let's see what the system does in standard X mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into drive. I'm turning traction control on and we have X mode on and we're just in drive because there's no other modes. Up we go, let's see how it does. Already we're having some troubles. Oh, oh, power is shifting, getting grip. Now keep in mind, snow tires are not miracles. They still are on a slippery surface. They just do a better job than all season radials. And <laughs> I mean, honestly, most drivers are not gonna need anything better than that. But I think we can bump this challenge up just a little bit. You'll see what I mean in a minute. This is basically the same all-wheel drive system as in the Subaru Outback we tested last week. However, here it's powered by a 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer motor, and that puts out 260 horsepower. Although slippery conditions aren't about horsepower, they're about grip. And here we have tilted the scales in our favor with, of course, snow tires. Because this is going to be very tricky, I'm going to try to do it all in one run. Getting up it is not really the issue, it's how much fuss we have to do to get there. Okay, so there's no other settings here other than turning on X mode, which I've done. Um, turn off the e-brake, put it into drive, and away we go. The 
Subaru doesn't give us much in terms of useful uh, input as to what the system's doing. I just have this graph up here that shows me my wheel position, which is good, but that doesn't really show me how power is getting moved around. So I'm going to have to kind of use my ears and kind of feel it out. We'll have a much better um, take on what's happening when I switch to exterior cameras, of course. So this is the first obstacle. I'm taking it to the right. Unlike the Outback, I'm going to drive right over the stump, put a wheel on the stump if I can. So that's going to make it a little trickier because, again, I want to see what the system's doing. It's not about getting to the top. It's about showing you how it does it. Oh, yeah, and I can feel that power as, as the wheel starts to spin. It doesn't rotate very much before Subaru really clamps the brakes on. And that is what is key at the system, is that it does attempt to put power to the back as much as possible. Some other systems only do it when they absolutely have to. You know, they'll spin two or three times and then finally decide, yes, we'll go ahead and do that. This one, it's straight up ready to send power whenever I ask it to. Nice. Now I'm going to go into the ditch over here because that's what I did with the Range Rover on All Seasons a few episodes ago. So we're going to do the same thing here. See how this system works. Nice. Now granted, we have a huge advantage here because we are on proper snow tires. I know that. But hopefully you saw something uh, that you learned a thing or two about how this system transfers power by seeing how it dealt with that slippery condition. Now that we've gone up, of course, now it's time to go back down. So I'm just... We've determined in the past that doing uh, hill descent control, which is standard on vehicles equipped with X mode, um, downhill doesn't make a lot of sense because you can't really go slow enough. When you're just stepping over rocks and difficult obstacles, uh, it's really important to be able to stop immediately. And obviously, hill descent control doesn't really do that. So the Subaru does set the hill descent control speed based on uh, my final braking position. So if I'm creeping down at one mile per hour, it'll set it at one mile per hour. Uh, but like I said, even here, one mile per hour is not quite slow enough. I want to really be creeping over things. Okay. You can complain about a CVT in the Subaru. You can complain over the fact that you can't get the turbo engine in the Forester yet. There's a lot of things, yeah, you could pick apart a Subaru and say, you know, that's not as good as it could be. But one thing you can't say negative things about at this point, I think, is the capability of the off-road system. Because for a consumer mainstream vehicle that is super nice to drive on the road, I mean, no compromises for road driving, this thing is just fantastic. When equipped with snow tires, the Subaru Ascent, or pretty much any Subaru, is a winter beast. If you do have plans to go anywhere there is going to be a lot of snow, I would certainly recommend a set. You can get the Continental Viking Contact 7s shown in this video for about $700 a set. I do have to note that I did not pick out these specific tires, nor are they sponsored as part of this video. I simply asked Subaru for snow tires on one of their cars, and this is what showed up. If you want to see more about snow versus all season radials, we actually made a video on it in 2017. You can find that on our channel. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Do you have a favorite snow tire? Tell us what you like. Post a comment below. Also, please like and share our videos. Oh, and hey, by the time you watch this, we should have surpassed 100,000 subscribers. So thanks again for all your support in the prior years. We're looking forward to another amazing year.